let's kick this video off straight away by saying thank you. Thank you to every single person who commented on my last video where I showed this schematic and especially those that pointed out the kind of fundamental mistake I'd made. And that major mistake is in this area here where I tied the gates of the P-channel MOSFET up here and the N-channel MOSFET down here together. My hope was that this meant I would need less pins on the Arduino to control uh, the two sides of this H-bridge. But more importantly, I wanted to make sure that this P-channel MOSFET and its partner N-channel MOSFET here could never be switched on at the same time. And I was hoping by tying the gates together that would prevent that from happening. But of course, it does exactly the opposite. The issue is that these gates will not just go straight from 12 volts down to 0 volts when we turn on this NPN transistor here. It will transition, and that transition will take a small amount of time. The gates of the two MOSFETs will drop from 12 volts down to 0 volts, but of course it will still transition through 10 volts and 8 volts and 6 volts, etc, etc. So let's think of an example here. We've just turned on this NPN transistor and the voltage is dropping, but let's say we've uh, taken a point in time when the gates are sat at 9 volts. Well, at 9 volts, this N-channel MOSFET is on. It starts turning on at about 3 volts and is most certainly on at 5 volts. So at 9 volts, it's well and truly on. But sadly, at the same time, the gate voltage is 3 volts lower than the source voltage here on this P-channel MOSFET, and therefore it's already conducting, which means we're conducting from 12 volts straight through the P-channel MOSFET, through the N-channel MOSFET, to 0 volts. We've created a short. So for the purposes of a quick demonstration, I've put together this breadboard of that circuit. These aren't the MOSFETs I was intending to use, but we've got two P-channel MOSFETs at the high side and two N-channel MOSFETs at the low side. Obviously, on the right-hand side, this circuit is an exact mirror of the left-hand circuit, so we only need to look at one of them. But you can see here that there is a 10K resistor uh, pulling up from 12 volts, as it will be, to the gate of this uh, P-channel MOSFET and then the two gates of these MOSFETs are tied together with this yellow cable here and uh, there's also another yellow cable that takes it over to this button so that we can uh, uh, bring it down to ground. The other side of this switch here is connected to ground so this is acting as my NPN transistor. The source of the P-channel MOSFET here is going to be connected to 12 volts. The two drains of the P and the N-channel MOSFET are connected together through this orange cable here. And then the N-channel uh, source is connected to ground. So exactly the same as I showed in my schematic, except for the fact that I'm using buttons rather than NPN transistors. Now I've connected this up to my bench power supply which is set for 12 volts and 100 milliamps. Now I am going to connect this small 12 volt motor between uh, the two sides of the H bridge. So that should connect there where the um, drains both meet and there. And uh, well, let's just bring that down bend those wires a bit put that there so we should be able to hear the motor spinning actually let me pull out a little bit so it seems to be working as expected the two pull-up resistors are ensuring that the two p-channel mosfets are not conducting but the uh, n-channel mosfets should be but if i press either of these buttons the motor starts to turn and uh, if I press this one yeah that's turning too so everything seems to be working but let's try and see the issue that everybody was keen to point out to me 
Right, I'm going to try and demo this effect. Um, I do have my bench power supply here um, and connected to ground, so that's providing the current that can go through the P-channel and N-channel MOSFETs here. And on the right-hand side, my multimeter should show the amount of current that is flowing. Under my left hand here, I have a SEPIC converter, which is uh, also set to uh, just over 12 volts, and it's providing the gate voltage for these two um, MOSFETs here. Because we can control the gate voltage and hold it at a certain voltage for a period of time, we'll be able to see the amount of current that's flowing through the two MOSFETs. Now, my bench power supply is limited to 100 milliamps, so we shouldn't see anything greater than that. But without further ado, let's reduce the gate voltage. So if we drop it just to, I don't know, 10, 9 and a bit volts, now we can see we're starting to see current flowing. 11, 12 milliamps flowing directly from positive to negative to through to partially on MOSFETs. And if I drop that down just a, a little bit further, we're straight up to 100 milliamps. Now, I don't want to hold it there for very long, but now as we drop below the uh, threshold voltage of the N-channel MOSFET or somewhere close to it, that current drops down, or it should... And then, yes, as we go to just 2 volts, well, we've dropped down to barely anything again. And, of course, yet yeah, these are getting quite hot because they're dissipating potentially quite a bit of power. 100 milliamps going directly through them when they're in their linear region in the middle. So, yeah, 7.5 volts and an awful lot of current can flow so there we have it, what seemed like a good idea on paper, tying these two gates together, actually turns out to be quite a bad idea in practice. And it would have been especially bad if I'd attached my, well, caravan battery across these two terminals. Things would have got quite exciting quite quickly. So thank you to each and every one of you that commented and pointed out that mistake. I'm going to go off and lick my wounds and scratch my head and hopefully come up with a better plan for next time. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.